Here are some other methods you can use with lists. First, let's make an empty list by putting two square brackets next to each other and show that it's empty. If we want to add a number to the list, we use append. If I say numbers.append10, now there's a 10 in the list. Let's add another number. and append an 11 at the end of the list. Now there's two items, and we'll go with one more here. Notice that append changes the list. It does not create a new one. If you want to add more than one item at a time, you can use addition to add one list to another list. I can say numbers should refer to the old value of numbers plus the list 13, 14, 15 and now numbers has the numbers 10 through 15 in it. The pop method removes the last element of the list. If I say last entry equals numbers dot pop, last entry will have the number 15 in it and numbers no longer has it in there. You can also pop an entry in the middle of a list let's say mid-entry equals numbers.pop2. If we look at mid-entry, it gets the 12, and numbers no longer has the 12 in it. Rather than use slices to insert elements into a list, you can use the insert method, giving the index number and the new value. I can say numbers.insert. At position 2, I want a 12. And at position 0, I'll put a 9. Insert inserts only one item at a time, unlike slices, where you can add as many items as you need. OK, that handles our laundry list of functions. Let's write a program that will ask users for numbers until they enter a negative number and store all those numbers in a list. We'll then find the average and print it, and then find out how many numbers are below the average, exactly average, and above average, and display that as well. First, the function to get the numbers. It's going to return a list of numbers as a result, so start with the empty list, and then set up the loop. We're not finished yet, and as long as we're not finished, we have to ask the user for some input. Enter a number or a negative to finish. Not great phrasing, but we can work on that later. If the number they entered is non-negative, then we can append it to our result list. Otherwise, we have a negative number and we're finished, and we can return the result list. By the way, during these videos, you may hear me say the word array instead of list. That's because the idea of a list is called an array in a lot of other programming languages, and I teach a couple of courses, so every once in a while I use their nomenclature of array rather than the Python nomenclature of a list. So bear with me, and whenever you hear array, think, oh, that's a Python list. Let's run this program and test it. We'll have a test list equals get numbers. Let's give it a 3, a 4, an 8, 7, and a 2, and a negative 1. And if we look at test list, there are numbers. It's working great. Now we need the function to find the average of the numbers in the list. So we're going to calculate the average of some list of data. In this case, we'll set the sum to 0. And then for each item in the data list, we're going to add it on to the sum. 
To get the average, we need the number of items in the list, and that's the len function. We take the length of our data. If the number is equal to zero, which means they gave us an empty list to start with, we'll just set the average to zero. The average of an empty list is zero. That seems a good compromise. Otherwise, the average is the sum divided by the number of items. And we return the average. Let's test that. Let's make our test list, in this case, 10 plus 15 is 25 plus 11 is 36. Let's set average to be calc average of our test list. So it looks like that function is working pretty well. And now our main program. We're going to create a data list which we'll get from get numbers. We'll calculate the average which is the calculated average of our data list. And then we'll print the average is, and let's use formatting here to make it look nice, to three decimal places, whatever the average is. Before we go further, let's test that to see if it works. And again, I forgot to invoke main, so let's do that and run again. If I take 10, 11, and 15, and then negative 1, the average is 12. Good. Now we need to go through the list again, counting the number of items in each category. The number of items above the average so far is 0, the number below is 0, and the number equal to the average is 0. For each item in the data list, if the item is greater than the average, then the number above becomes one greater. Otherwise, if the item is less than the average, the number below plus and becomes one. If it's not greater or less, it must be equal, and so the number equal is incremented by one. Finally, we need to display those results. We'll print number of items below average, the number below, the number of items equal to average, and pardon my typing errors here, is an equal, and the number of items above average will be n above. Let's clear the shell and run the program. This time let's do 10, 11, 12, and 15. And that the average is 12, two of them are below, one is equal to the average, and one is above average. And there's our program that shows lists in action.